I told my subscribers recently that I really plan to focus in on leash training with my own Doberman pup, Arlo, and that prompted just a ton of questions surrounding this topic. So in this video, it's all about the best leash training technique specifically for the Doberman breed. I'm gonna show you the exact leash training technique that I'm using on Arlo, which in my experience appeals really well to a Doberman's natural instincts. And the other cool thing is it addresses a lot of the short attention span issues that we have with a Doberman pup at this young age. So I think you're really gonna like this. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, real quick, before we slap a leash onto Arlo and get started with our leash training, let's go over a couple basics that are good to have squared away first. Number one is um, our demeanor. We wanna make sure we're calm, relaxed, and confident. Uh, you know, more can travel down this leash than a lot of owners realize, and one of them is your attitude. If you're calm and relaxed, your dog is going to be much more likely to be calm and relaxed. And if you're confident, your dog's going to be a lot more likely to fall in line. You know, unexpected things will come up. I can just about promise you while you're leash training. I can promise you that probably while filming this, unexpected things will come up, but that's okay. Act calm, confident, like you know what you're doing, and just keep working through it. Also, keep this positive and fun. It should be a positive experience for your dog. Um, they should look forward to these walks and the leash training. Um, you don't want them to uh, despise it and, and dread it. It should be a fun, happy experience. So keep it that way as best as you can. Um, also, make sure you reward their good behavior as soon as they exhibit the behavior that you want, like right away. You can't have a delay in your reward. Um, I've talked on my channel before about the importance of finding what motivates your dog. So if your dog is motivated by treats, make sure you have your treats. If they're motivated by a uh, certain toy, have that with you. Or in Arlo's case, he's very motivated by just love and attention and praise. So that's what I will be doing to reinforce his good behavior. If he was more treat motivated, which a lot of Doberman are, especially at this age, um, I'd have a pocket full of treats with me and have that ready to go to mark his good behavior. And if you're not quick enough at getting your treats out of your pocket, like I wouldn't be, you could always use something like this, a little clicker to help mark the good behavior uh, and then give him some food right away um, just to kind of help reinforce uh, the behavior that he exhibited, which triggered the praise and the reward. Um, also remember routine is your friend. This is I, one of the things that um, is very instinctual for Dobermans. They love routine, so use that to your advantage. Make a routine with how you hook your dog up to the leash. Have a routine for your route you take, for the breaks you take along the way. Um, have a routine for how you reinforce everything. And I can throw in the word consistency too. Um, that's really important for Dobermans. Use that to your advantage. You know, there's a time and a place for exposing your dog to as many new experiences as possible. Leash training isn't one of them, at least not in the beginning for sure. So. Um, Make it a good uh, routine that you can stick to and uh, something that they can expect. Maybe you go walking once a day in the evenings and kind of a similar route, at least until they get the hang of the leash training, then you can move on from there. Um, also, make sure your dog's exercise before you train them. It really takes the edge off, helps them focus a lot. In every scene in this video that you'll see, um, Arlo would, will probably be exercised just before shooting that scene. That kind of just helps take the edge off and helps them focus a little bit more. Um, it's been said Dobermans have a short attention span at this age. The attention span of a gnat is something that I've heard many times at this age. Um, so you need everything you can get working in your favor. Um, right now, this is uh, a, one of the most boring rooms in the house which is a great thing for keeping his attention. It's quiet, it's evening time, my kids are asleep, so it's usually a chaotic house, but not right now. Um, great time to start off with this leash training. So let's jump into the first steps, and that is yielding to leash pressure. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is really simple. I'm just gonna put a leash on Arlo here. He's obviously really wound up. Um, so I'm gonna put the leash on him and just get him used to it for a little bit. This is not something that you necessarily do before every walk. Uh, just in the beginning, the very beginning of training, it's great to uh, just get him used to that and the, uh, the strangeness of the leash kind of uh, work that out of him. So, hey buddy, Arlo, come here, sit, stay. And this is my thing. I just like to not put the leash on him until he sits and he stays and waits for me. Arlo, sit, stay. Ah, ah. 
Leave it. Good boy. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of let him relax here with the leash and uh, try not to let him chew on it in the meantime. I don't want him to get stuck on chewing on it. And like I said earlier, he's already been exercised, so this is still just all natural energy. It might be good to have a toy with you to help distract him so he doesn't chew on the leash. Arlo, drop it. Good boy, right here. Hey, hey, right here, right here. Right here. Right here. Good boy, good boy. All right, Arlo's uh, pretty well focused on either me or his toy, um, and he's kind of forgotten about the leash, which is good. So he's pretty used to it right now, so that's a good first step. Um, we can move on to uh, yielding to leash pressure now. All right, so for yielding to leash pressure, uh, I'm gonna have him next to me somewhere on the left-hand side, uh, sitting or standing position's fine, and uh, a little light pressure parallel to the ground with a leash. As soon as he reacts, either by looking at me or moving towards me, uh, I'm going to praise him a lot and get him really excited because that's, that's what he loves for a reward. All right, buddy, come here. Up here. Right here. Good boy. Right here. Come on. Sit. Stay. He's on my left side, parallel to the ground. A little light pressure. Good boy. Yes. Yes. Good boy. Good boy. He started to move towards me just a little bit. Good boy. And that's when I uh, mark that with praise and reward. Leave it. Now let's try it the other direction. Come on, over here. Over here, good boy. Good boy, right here. Sit. Uh, let's turn this way. Good boy, sit. Good boy, stay. Good boy, yes. Yes, good boy. See that little pressure to the left? And uh, he started to go left and now he gets his praise. Good boy, yes. Again, I'm gonna do light pressure, parallel to the ground. I'm gonna pull him towards me this time. Just light pressure. Good boy, yes, yes, good boy, good boy. Okay, so after I feel like Arlo's kind of got the idea down of yielding to leash pressure, then we'll move on to practicing the heel position. Okay, so to practice the heel position, first I'm gonna show you what the proper heel position is for Arlo here and why we do it. I'm gonna get him in roughly that position. Arlo, come here, heel. Right about there. Uh, with the heel position, you want him close to your left side. You want his front paws at your heels. That's why it's called the heel position. And a pretty short uh, lead on the leash here. You don't want a big lot of slack here, just a short lead. Now, the good thing about this heel uh, position is, one, it shows that you're in charge. You're, you're in front with him. It's not like he's out in front charging the way. If he's out in front like this, he has all the leverage. If he wants to make a right turn, he'll just cut off my path and I'll have to go right. If he wants to make a left turn, I pretty much need to follow him also. But when I'm up here, I have the leverage and the advantage because his rear end is gonna go where his front end starts to go. So if we're walking and all of a sudden I wanna make a left and I go heel, he has to walk left with me as well. Now, if I try to turn uh, heel, if I try to turn into him like that and I was back here, he's not gonna go where I want at all. I'm just going to run to his back end and he's going to stay there. So that's why a good heel position is incredibly important for leash training. Okay. So to practice this, I'm just going to say the word heel. I'm going to guide him here. Um, hopefully not jerking and pulling and fighting with him, just a gentle guide. And once he gets in the position that I want, I'm going to praise and reward him. Arlo, heel. Come here. Just heel. Hey, come on. Good heel, yes, yes. So even if you gotta walk up to him the first few times, it's better that you walk up to him if you have to than wrestling him into position. Or you can kind of start to walk and walk around until he circles around on the right side. Just don't get in a wrestling match with him. Good boy, good heel, good heel. All right, now we can give him a little break and we'll try again. Good boy. All right, Arlo, heel. Good boy, good heel. I'm gonna give him a little break here. Ah, 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 leave it. Hey, leave it. Good boy. All right, come here, heel. Good heel. Yes, good heel, good heel. All right, so once your dog has a heel position down, just like Arlo's doing really good with it lately, he still messes up from time to time, 
but he's definitely got the basics down. Then it's safe to move on to the actual leash training portion where we're actually gonna start walking on the leash. Now, when you actually start the walking portion of leash training, your biggest enemy is gonna be distractions for your dog and the short attention span of a young pup like this. So um, I'm doing this in the more boring room in my house. Like I mentioned, it's evening time, the kids are asleep. Reduce the distractions as much as possible. That's why I'm starting here. After I do some practice here and he seems to be showing really good signs, I'm gonna then move in to the backyard and then I'll move into slowly, progressively um, areas with more and more distractions. Maybe out to the park that's nearby uh, when there's not a lot of people around and then when there's progressively more people. So this portion of the video could go on easily for another half hour to discuss all the fine techniques involved in this and how to handle some of the issues that come up. But for the interest of time, I'm gonna just get to leash training this guy um, and I'm gonna be going in progressively more distracting environments um, from this evening here in the house to uh, probably tomorrow, uh, depending on how he progresses or maybe even a couple days later in the backyard if we need to practice more in the house first and then maybe move on from there as I'm doing that, you can watch my training and I'll be uh, talking. You'll hear my voice over the video uh, discussing some of my techniques as I go so you can see it in action. All right, Arlo, here we go. All right, so here, if you see, Arlo's already been a little stubborn to come up. So I gave him a little tug and he finally got up on his feet. He's actually doing really well during this portion. Um, he's staying right with me. He's not uh, pulling at all, so I'm really not correcting him. He did really great inside, probably because all that previous training, yielding leash pressure, heel position, all that was done in the same environment. So he's doing really well. So actually, I'm gonna move on to outdoor training pretty quickly here. As you see, I'm just walking around, keeping him in that position, even turning into him, and he has no choice but to go with me. And every time I stop, I want him to sit down. That's kind of the habit I want him to develop. So I stop here, and he sits. I tell him to sit, he sits, I praise and reward. Now we're moving on to outside, and uh, this is where it gets interesting because there's more distractions. I start again by putting the leash on him, um, making him sit and stay for the leash, just like I did inside. And then I'm gonna let him have some time to kind of just walk around with the leash and get used to it. And if he starts to go too far one direction, as you see right there, he starts to kind of pull off that way. Um, I don't let him tug me that direction. I stop and I go the opposite direction. As he starts pulling more, I pull the opposite direction. I never let him guide me somewhere by pulling. Okay, now we're ready to start. So he's seated uh, in the heel position and I say, let's go. That's the command that I've chosen. Yep. When, so that way he knows that if I'm consistent with that command, that that means it's time to work. So now we're walking, heads up, shoulders back. I'm walking with confidence. Um, really, I wish I was charging ahead a little bit more here. I'm trying to stay in frame for you guys, um, but in a bigger yard or bigger area, I would definitely charge ahead a little bit faster. And I have very, like, if you can see my fingers on the leash, it's, it's very, uh, very close down. There's not much lead at all. And there he started to pull a little bit, so I'd just be turned into an anchor. I just stopped like an anchor. And now I'm telling him to sit, and he sits, and then I say, let's go, and I continue on again. So again, the command let's go is to work. I don't praise him too much there because you run the risk of praising him for pulling. There he started to pull again. So again, I turn into an anchor, even take a half a step back. He's a little distracted. I do a little up tug while I say sit, and now he sits. And now I say, let's go again. So his reward is to get walking again. That's his reward. Now, another great way to keep him from tugging is to start turning into him a little bit more. Um, you can even walk back and forth in the same direction. He needs to go where you want him to go. So as this happens, if he's tugging too much, try a few turns into him uh, to see if that helps with the tugging a little bit as well. So you can do a combination of turning into him and switching directions suddenly and making him go with you or uh, becoming an anchor and uh, stopping and making him sit before you continue on. He's doing a lot better here as we're progressing. Okay, and I'm about done walking, so I'm gonna stop and tell him that we're gonna stop here. Okay, and he did great and he sat right down, so I'm praising and rewarding because that was a successful session right there. And now I'm giving him a break. You gotta give him lots of breaks as you do this. Every few minutes when you're first starting out, give him breaks to just sniff around and be a dog. Okay, so now we're going out into a public place, which is a, a park with not very many people at it right now. And I'm just walking with him, getting him used to a whole new environment. I'm getting a little sloppy here, as you can tell. Look at the lead on that leash, just to be a little self-critical here. Um, really should have a much shorter lead. I was just uh, really happy he's doing really well that day. Um, this was early on in training. 
And so I, I let him have a little more freedom, which really shouldn't do till later on. I'm also juggling a camera, as you can see, but um, so shorter lead when you do this, and uh, I try to do a shorter lead more often, but again, he's doing great. He's staying right at my side in the heel position, even with a longer lead. Little tugs every now and then is okay to correct him. And turning into him from time to time is good as well. He needs to change direction when you say it's time to change direction. And he's getting a little distracted there, see that? And uh, so I'm just continuing on, I'm charging ahead. As long as you give him lots of breaks, those distractions are okay. Real quick guys, I think it's important we talk about what the normal progression is for this leash training thing because if you don't know what is normal, I feel like it's really easy to get frustrated and um, you need to know the difference between if it's time to re-examine your technique, maybe you're doing something wrong, or if it's time to just dig in your heels and be more consistent. I can tell you that nine times out of 10, it's the second of those two. It's time to just dig in your heels and be consistent, especially with a dog like a Doberman. Um, however, uh, okay, let me tell you how this is exactly how this is gonna go because I've seen it a hundred times. You're gonna take your dog out on a walk, and that first half, the dog's, the dog's gonna be just horrible. You're gonna be like, wow, this is rough. The second half of the walk, you're gonna be like, okay, wow, this dog's really responding to this training. This is working, I have hope. And then you're gonna take him out the second day. The second day you take him out on a walk, the first half, the first thought going through your brain is gonna be like, wow, did he just forget everything he learned the prior time? Because he is way worse. Um, and then halfway through, again, the walk, uh, it's, he's gonna be doing really well and focused on you and you're like, okay, maybe he's improving a little bit. So it's gonna be like this, guys. There's gonna be, it's gonna be up and down, the hills and valleys. And, and then throw on top of that, if the dog has extra energy one day or catches a weird scent or is focused on something else a little bit more than normal one day, you're gonna have some of these thrown in there. The hills and valleys are what throw off a lot of owners. As long as the overall trend is going up and improving, then things are right on track. It is not, not gonna be like this. It's not gonna be a straight day after day improvement on the leash train. It's gonna be like this with the overall trend going up. That is totally normal and that's why it's important not to let this part discourage you because that throws off a lot of owners. So know that that's coming and just stick with it. Now, when do you really examine your technique because maybe you're doing something wrong? I would say if it's gone seven days, of walking your dog every day and you have not noticed a improvement from the first day to the last day, then maybe it's time to re-examine your technique. But that's almost never the case. It's usually that these hills and valleys are throwing people off and getting them discouraged. Don't let that happen to you guys. So how do most people fail in this process? Well, really it's one of two things that usually happens. One is like I talked about previously, the hills and the valleys throwing off the owners and just throwing them off track. And the other thing that happens a lot is they rush this process. It's gotta be really slow with the yielding to leash pressure, with the heel position teaching them that, and then moving on to little walks inside the house, then to the backyard, then to more distracting environments. If you go straight to a pet store, that's probably the most distracting place you can bring your dog. Um, or you go straight to a busy park right away, for example. That's really gonna um, throw a big wrench in this whole process. You gotta progress slow. The other thing that happens is people leave their house with a destination in mind, or a specific time to be somewhere. Don't do that, please, for the foreseeable future with leash training your dog until they really have leash training down. Um, because even subconsciously, you're gonna start looking at the time and be like, man, I gotta be there soon. This is taking way too long. We've had way too many corrections uh, with the pulling issue. And you're gonna start getting a little sloppy and letting the dog go out in front of you a little bit, break that heel position. Uh, you're also gonna let a few more incidences slide when they start pulling a little bit. And then by the end of the walk, you've just reinforced pulling and you've actually worked against yourself. So don't ever leave the house with a destination or a time to be somewhere, especially in the beginning with leash training. There's a lot more to leash training than just what this brief overview went over, guys. Um, but, you know, I think this is one of those topics that's really critical for the happiness of you and your dog. So I urge you to go to DobermanPlanet.com slash newsletter and sign up for my newsletter there because I'm working on a really more in-depth uh, resource on this topic that's going to address a lot of more of the bumps in the road that you might come across while doing this. Uh, and of course, like any more in-depth resource that I develop, it'll be made available specifically to my newsletter subscribers long before anybody else. So go to DobermanPlanet.com slash newsletter, enter your email address there, and then you'll be on the inside loop. Thank you so much for watching. If you found anything useful in this video at all, hit the thumbs up button and uh, subscribe down below with a little bell icon if you don't mind. I'd really appreciate it. Of course, see you next week.